and uh, I was I had every reason to worry Gilbert about uh, Kakamega and network now you've been found uh, karibu tena you are making some comments about uh, Belgium <laughs> and their youth development structures yeah they've had a very good youth development structure yeah, you look at the kind of players that have come, come through the ranks I think the coach has done extremely well I was watching a documentary about him and the way he goes around his business you know moving from one pitch to another you know trying to look at the little talents that they have all over the all over the uh belgium i think it's a good it's a good indicator that he's not just looking at uh uh, uh the lukaku's he's looking at uh, what happens after lukaku what after happens after hazard what happens after de bruna and i think uh, they have a solid youth program that is going to push them uh, uh, for a real while uh in the world of football uh, just in the same way, I think uh, the English have done their bit with uh, their squad. You talked about uh, the English squad that is coming through. You see the talent against Ukraine. Remember, they brought in almost a new set of strikers that had people like uh, Marcus Rashford, who had been sitting uh, on, on, the, in the, on the benches, and people like Jadon Sancho uh, coming through, doing the job and all that. Now, I want us to talk about a subject that is so dear to your heart. You remember AFC Leopards losing uh, on post penalties to Gormaya in that uh, FKF Betway Cup. Now... It must be frustrating for somebody like you, Celebwa. <laughs> season in, season out, FC Leopards are not winning uh, anything. Now we, you are faced with another season that you'll be going home empty-handed. I think it's, an, an, it's very unfortunate. It's very, very unfortunate uh, that uh, AFC Leopards, as a fraternity, has failed to have a long-term plan for the club. Well, since the resurrection of FC Leopards in 2009, mm. we've really not had, uh, you know, a solid management that has uh, come out to uh, tell the masses exactly what they need to achieve over the years. Because every year, FC Leopards wants to win the league. Every year, FC Leopards want to compete with Gormahia. And I think that has been their biggest undoing. Anytime that they play Gore, it's, it's like, you know, the world comes to a standstill. But this is, should not be the case. I think what 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 uh, athletics has done, the likes of Kipruto, Keter, Chesire, Chebet, Musai, Yego, Keter, Cheriot, Kiprop, Serem, you name all these people. These are uh, 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 individual individual uh, persons who have um, you know taken that time to plan on how they can be able to get to the top. But uh, one thing that FC Lepers has lacked is that uh, long term um, uh, strategic plan on how we are supposed to win the league. Because, okay, once you win the league, and then what's next? I think this is where they, they, they've, uh, they've got it all wrong in the, in the past. And I like what uh, Dan has done, you know, with the incoming of the youngsters, Austin Odiambo, uh, Levis Bandis, and Adi Clyde, uh, Stichenja. This is the way to go. They have invested in youth. Of course, uh, uh, it was very glaring in the game against Gormai yesterday. You looked at the composure of Gore, especially in the second half. You look at the composure of Gormai, especially on penalty kicks. You know, they were very composed. It's like um, it's something that they had re rehearsed overnight. And they, they took their penalties with, with ease as compared to FC Leopards, including, uh, the, 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 you know, the top guns in, in the team, not being able to convert their penalties. So I think there's a lot of pressure on the team, despite the fact that they played extremely well, especially in the first half. Uh, with uh, Machapo having eaten too many chapatis yesterday and um, <laughs> really proved not to be useful uh, on the team um, on the day. Yeah, well, uh, are you suggesting that um, any stated fact that uh, FC Leopards would like to win the league, would like to win trophies at the beginning of every season, works against the club? Are you saying that? Yes, uh, with authority. With authority, because... If, if, you want to build, if you want to build a bungalow, you cannot think about building a grass-thatched house. If you, if, if, if you think about building a grass-thatched house, it means that, that uh, uh, even your mindset is going to be about a grass-thatched house. But if you want to put up a bungalow, it means that your mind has to broaden. How do I get the finances to be able to you know, push me to build this bungalow to the end? And I think that has been the biggest undoing with the FC Leopards. They want to, they want to win the league but they don't want to put a strategic plan. I think it's now that uh, the incumbent, uh, Dan Shikanda, should realize that uh, it's, not, it's, not, it's 
No, it's not just about winning the league. It's about planning that, okay, we, we want to invest in this youth. We want to have the, uh, the our financial base, base solid. We want to put you know, all our resources together and then pick the best, the best machinery that uh, will push you to, to, to the end. Pick the best uh, coach that you want. Pick the best uh, uh, atmosphere, working environment that you want them to work in and then be able to move on. Look at what uh, Jurgen Klopp did at, uh, at Liverpool. Um, he came in, he had so many things to do, including, uh, you know, uh, wrapping up the surface of, uh, of, of, of training and then the playing ground, you know, reorganizing everything. And he gave them four years and he said, after four years, we're going to win the Premier League. And truth, truth be told, he, uh, you know, ended up winning the, the, the Premier League. So it's all about planning. If they can start planning now with the youth players that they have at this point in time, I think in future... FC Lepers can go back to the in, team in, that uh, when you was talk about planning Celebo, when you talk about planning and yeah. uh, you know knowing what you want of course at the beginning of the season FC Leopards coach uh, chairman sorry uh, Dan Shikanda said that uh, he will buy he will ensure that each player is uh, is, is, is bought for uh, at least a house for winning the league and uh, that was the motivation that was put on the ground uh, wasn't it enough you know to motivate these players in order to go for every trophy available. Dustin, how do you buy a house when you don't have one? How do you buy me a house when you don't have one? I think that is just being too overambitious. You know, telling a player that you're going to buy houses, you're going to buy houses at the end of the league, when you are unable to meet the day-to-day -day, uh, basic needs of the player. Wow. You know, there's complaint. Uh, I'm not sure how far it is that the FC Lopez players have not been paid for the last three or four months, despite the fact that they have a uh, sponsor. And, uh, you know, you're telling, you're telling me to win the league so that you get me a house, and yet you cannot be able to meet my basic needs. I think that is just overboard. That is something that is, is overambitious, and that's, these are some of the things that I say are bogging down the team. Let us have something that we can, a structure that we can be able to work with, and a reasonable structure, reasonable finances, Get players that you can afford to pay on a monthly basis. Pay me one shilling. You know, tell me you'll pay me one shilling, but pay me on a monthly basis. I will accept. Don't tell me you'll pay me 10 shillings, and then you keep on, you know, going month after month, and we are all in debt. So I think it's a question of trying to work with what you have and get the kind of quality that you can get within uh, your, your financial base and then be able to move on. That way they can be able to get uh, to the end of uh, this thing. Yeah, I'm, I'm aware that uh, you are doing commentary for uh, one of the uh, Africa's, you know, multinational uh, uh, channels uh, doing it in yeah. the Ethiopian Premier League. Now, I, I would like you to talk to us about uh, your experience there. How is it being done uh, differently? Remember, the COVID pandemic has di disrupted everything. Now, we had to rush everything to ensure that uh, a champion or a representative uh, of the CAF Champions League is selected in the Kenyan Premier League. Uh, of course, you are aware that Tasca uh, got that ticket uh, having topped the table by June 30th. Now, FC Leopards losing that game to Gormaya, Gore to represent Kenya in the CAF Confederation Cup. It was kind of, you know, a, a fast-tracked uh, system. I don't know. How is it working in uh, Ethiopia? Well, one thing that, uh, that uh, has uh, really dawned on Ethiopia is the presence of uh, Super Sports, the world of champions uh, in their league. You know, they've taken over their league. They're sharing their league all over the world. Everybody, you know, all these players are on the market. And uh, some of them have already been approached by big European clubs. And this in itself has really, really boosted uh, the image of the Ethiopian Premier League. Mm -hmm. Now, one thing that the Ethiopian Premier League has done um, as, as, as a company is that they managed to uh, approach the governments because uh, Ethiopia is the federal government, and therefore each each uh, each city has its own way of doing their things, and therefore they approached individual governments and they decided that all their matches are going to be played in a bubble, mm -hmm. like you take matches to Kisumu and you have uh, hotels around where you have you keep all the teams within the, 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 the hotels and uh, in and around the stadium. That way, it has been very, very possible for the Ethiopian Premier League to move on under this pandemic uh, 
uh, scourge that we're having, in that you're able to monitor your players, you're able to take tests every 24 hours before a match, mm -hmm. and those that are, um, you know, have, have uh, indications of a COVID are set aside, and the games have moved on. So each team plays about five or six matches uh, in, one, in, in one city, mm -hmm. and then uh, they go rest for about two weeks, and then move again all the teams to another city. And that's how the Ethiopian Premier League has managed to, you know, go through all their matches because their matches are played in the morning and they are also played in the, in the, in the, in, in the afternoon. And apparently 156 games were all shown on your World of Champions. And I think this is a big plus for Ethiopian football. It's something that can be replicated uh, uh, not only in Africa, but in Kenya, if uh, the Football Federation can sell the idea to the government uh, the national government, and also by extension, sell the same idea to the local governments, which uh, played a play a very very huge role in terms of facilitating uh, accommodation and transportation, mm. and um, you know uh, all that, especially in the in the Ethiopian Premier League. Yeah, quickly because we've run out of time. Uh, uh, just in a nutshell, how are the players paid? What, what is the structure like? Uh, is it that every club decide, determines? what is to be paid to the players, or it is something that is controlled by the Premier League body? The Federation has set, has set a standard that uh, no Premier League player will be paid below a certain amount. Mm -hmm. And therefore, over and above that, uh, any arrangement that you have as an individual with an individual club is, uh, is all a plus. But the Federation has set a standard that no player will be played Beyond, below a certain kind of uh, uh, amount, and I think that, that has done very, very well. And also, remember, Ethiopia is also a big exporter of uh, coffee. Therefore, most of the, uh, some of the, uh, a good percentage of the money that comes with coffee is also distributed amongst these clubs, and it has really has helped them, uh, you know, uh, boost uh, capacity and also boost the way the Ethiopian football and culture has come out in recent times. Thank you. I would like to thank you um, uh, most, most sincerely, Celebo, for coming through to help us uh, understand this. And uh, we hope that you'll we'll, uh, find more time to engage us, tell us uh, what is happening elsewhere uh, in, in the Ethiopian uh, Premier League. Uh, this has been uh, Sports Chat on this uh, beautiful Monday. And remember to do it every other time, every Monday, because we bring you all the news doing uh, you know, uh, uh, headlines across the world. And uh, like you said, you've heard from us, we've been uh, uh, tackling also the issues of the Olympics team.